Welcome everyone, welcome racers. Gran Turismo 7, after a short break, time to get back to the career and move the cafe menu books uh, forward. Let's see what awaits us in the next one. Uh, the next one is the menu book number 31, collection portion 911. I now remember that the previous previous one was related to. Uh, let me just move it a little bit. The previous uh, previous one was related to tuning the Porsche, so it's ready for that collection. So uh, we don't have to do that part at least. So what do we have here? We have three cars to collect, uh, all 911s, one turbo from 81 to Carrera RS from 92 and 95. Luca, it's finally time to try your hand at the Porsche Cup. I'm sure you've heard plenty about Porsche. They're one of Germany's and the world's most celebrated sports cars manufacturers. These days, the brand is almost synonymous with the legendary 911 series and that's what I would like you to collect next. You can win them by finishing in the top three in the Porsche Cup. Are you all set? Acquire three different 911 models and bring them bring them here for me to admire. Well, Porsche is Porsche, right? One of the most beautiful cars ever made and the design is timeless. So let's move to world circuits. I'm already in my Porsche, I think. So hot here in UK. My chair is not in the aligned position. Now it is okay, finally. So all three races in Europe. Uh, one in Nürburgring fitting for a Porsche, one at Italy, at Maggiore. And where's the last one? At Spa. The last one is at Spa. So let's do Majora first. Uh, so here we're going to try to win. Only I could tell. Oh, I'm not in my Porsche. I'm pretty sure I was. There we go. That's the Porsche I prepared. So let's enter and let's try to win. First of the three Porsche to collect. Five laps. There is a Sugawara to listen to. Hello there, my name is Tatsuya Sugawara. I went to see the Porsche Carrera Cup when I was a child and I fell in love with the sounds the cars make. I've been, in bi I've been a big Porsche fan ever since. Porsche's RR layout means that the heavy engine is placed at the rear of the car. This means the weight doesn't shift too far forward even when braking, allowing all four tires to be used. It's a layout that's been very well thought out. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking the car I'm driving is pretty new, right? Um, so in terms of the assist settings, I'll be having no traction control, even though I could. But I will have the weak ABS. That car definitely have weak ABS. A uh, gearbox is manual, and I think with that model, that will be H pattern. Uh, in terms of the car settings, we're starting on sport softs, which should be just fine. Okay, let's try it. momentum here.
three laps and six, six seconds. Okay, I think it's uh, doable. Two seconds, that's so very close to the P1 now. Surprise that overtook him on lap three. Seven seconds, but it's going to drop now because it's a straight and he's faster on straight. At least I stayed in front here. I need to use my advantage in those uh, mid medium speed corners I'm usually gaining here 1.7 that's not bad a small slide there which costed me some time definitely he gained on me on that corner overall slide here two point two seconds just need to be careful now a bit slower and then on lap four than on lap three Quite a comfortable advantage, maybe not safe one, but definitely comfortable.
That's what I was talking about. It's not safe advantage. Sometimes the behavior of this cars in Gran Turismo 7 really surprises me. Like you can do 10 laps, nothing happens, and then on lap 11, something completely unexpected happens. Uh, the car behaves like... You would never think about this. Every single lap, every single corner, I'm fighting for stability in that car. Oh my, oh my, it really wasn't an easy race. I actually don't feel like uh, driving anymore today. That race really tired me. Oh. Yeah, I'll continue another day. Uh, don't have much time in the way. Two more races left. Uh, Spra and Nürburgring. Uh, Spa. And Nürburgring. So it is time for the race two of the Porsche Cup. Uh, this time is Nürburgring. Uh, I'm going to use the same <clears throat> model I used before, even though I uh, want a new one. So let's stick to what I have. Uh, what's the other thing? Ah, oh, that was done. Okay. So. Uh, 650 or less PP. I think I have like 649 manufacturer Porsche. And I'm sure it's going to be, well, it says Nürburgring North, life. that's going to be interesting. Maybe I should uh, put a spoiler lit card then on this truck. I have it without any additional spoilers you can buy in GT Auto. Okay, so we have two guys to listen to. Caraza and uh, Blasan. So this is a Porsche race. Were you able to make one with in regulations? I like the way that a Porsche feels like an extension of your body. And the flat six engine node is just lovely. The car that really responds to the driver and the body boasts plenty of uh, rigidity too. I don't know. On um, the first race uh, in the fast or even medium speed car, this car felt really bad. The GT3 uh, uh, 997 I was driving. Hello there, I'm Adriano Carazza. I'm a big fan of Porsche because they make cars for people who love cars. Okay. My father really liked them too. The Nürburgring Snorch Life is a tricky truck, so it's worth taking time to familiarize yourself with it. I'll take a while, it will take a while because it's a long truck, but once you get used to it, it's a really fun circuit. It actually really is a fun circuit. So, uh, assistant wise, we have uh, manual gearbox, no traction control, and ABS wick, everything else is off. Car settings wise, it's racing hard tires. Uh, 363 brake horsepower and uh, 1287 kilograms of weight. Okay, let's start and see how it goes. Addition of that spoiler, the uh, rear wing was a good decision. 
better with a uh, racing car, though it's uh, very risky to put racing cars because those are slicks and it can rain in these races. But generally, driving this car now feels so much better. much better with this builder, without it it was horrible to drive. I still don't know if I'm driving fast enough, but I couldn't do it without a spoiler. The closest I was was like a half a second in the first one. And in the first race of the Porsche Cup, I was struggling enormously without the spoiler. If only I knew the spoilers are so much, I would get it so much earlier. Okay, that was a mistake. Lucky late didn't spin me out, so stayed on the track. 17 seconds to the first one, still in the 6, I think they quite cramped there in the front. weather, clean sky, very sunny. I think uh, points to rain this time around. the gap.
catching up with him slowly. I need to overtake him before the long straight and I have to keep him behind me. And I'm not sure if I can do it. I had to do it this time around. Sliding, but I get a good gap of 1.7, which I'll be slowly losing now. Here we go, it's going down and it's really fast, faster than I expected. Wow, it's just one second now, that's crazy. How fast is it? Or how slow I am? I think this is a spoiler. I'll be blocking. win is a win. Oh my gosh, that was a hard race. It really was. Without that spoiler, it was horrible. But the spoiler, I was so slow on that long straight. Crazy. <sighs> I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it wasn't raining because I was in slicks as well. Okay, one more less, one more race left, and that's on Spa. I don't care about those things, really don't. They meaningless. Move to Belgium, to Spa, and let's try to what else we have here. What I haven't done that. And that, two races which I missed. Uh, okay, let's do Spa in Porsche Cup and be done with it. I'm using the Sense Pitan. Fast section of the racetrack. Over 
take another two guys that would be in P6. With, uh, 15 seconds, more or less. Go. Very twitched there. Not sure that fifth gear was necessary. All the way to the first gear, the slowest part of the track that she came. First lap. I think second gear is the best choice here. First gear may be unnecessary. Lap two, closing to Arush, one of the most famous uh, corners in the world. Car racing. I think the other corner with such a fame is the Coke Street like Nessica. Ten seconds, that was really good first lap. I hopped the car after the first one. Baraza, that's the guy who's usually first. So I may need to fight hard to overtake him and see. Time to reduce to first gear. So I had to negotiate the whole chicane on the second. And a horrible time. Comparison to the first one. I was stuck there behind some of the uh, well now back markers. Lap three. Seconds gap. Slow down a little bit there just to stay within the track limits. Got a 20 here, 4th gear, 5th gear, and heavy braking in the second. seconds to the first one, Blasham at the first place currently. because I'm much faster there and I'm P1 now. That was quite easy. He didn't put any fight for red position. Almost 
seconds advantage now over him. Two laps to go. A chance of rain. Dark clouds over over, over the truck. I was flat out. late and brakes again here to the chicane but at least I was able to reduce all the way to the first gear now that lap was still slower than the first one. Oh, but the first lap uh, starts past the finish line I think let's try to go down to 32 maybe 31 I have a uh, freer now clearer in front, I don't have to fight with anyone for position. I can just drive as fast as I can, really. He was good on brakes there to the chicane. Past the slab, but still 33. Five seconds now, definitely gain some time over the second. Bit of oversteer 
there, but this is so far the best sector time by a second. That's what it costed me on the previous lap, that mistake on the uh, fast left-handers. 6.3 seconds to the second one, that's quite a nice gap. Stay in a second gear this time. It kind of feels that the first one is too low. I don't know what the time it was, so let's wait for the uh, race information. 231.8, but it wasn't me. It's man M. Farber. I'm curious what my lap time was. Hmm. Anyway, that was Porsche Cup. Finally done. I had some issues with the first two races due to lack of the spoiler. Uh, I didn't put one because I didn't know it, that they were so important. Uh, especially that those cars come with the spoilers, the, the factory spoilers. And I thought they're as good as any, but they're not. So adjusting the settings uh, helped immensely with uh, drivability of these cars and helped me win all the races. And that's the lesson learned for the future. Spoiler in this game. Uh, even if the car comes with one, uh, a custom one is so, so, so much better. Oh, I'm glad I'm done with this series. Uh, it wasn't easy, I have to say. It was quite a nice challenge, uh, which is good. I'm not saying it's not. I have to remember to finish those two races. I don't know how I missed them. Uh, probably this was for the collections, where I already had a car. I'll have to review quite a lot of this. Um, actually, I reviewed them recently. It looks like I missed a uh, spa. Anyway, let's go to the cafe to collect the reward. They're beautiful, this Porsche. Such an amazing cars. Congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your Porsche 911 collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. Stories that was menu book number 31, collection Porsche 911. Germany's Porsche is a world-renowned manufacturer of sports cars, and the 911 is one of the company's most popular models. Since its debut in 1963, the Porsche 911 has developed a reputation as something of a masterpiece. It has a compact body, a powerful engine, and a rear-wheel drive layout. The engine is also mounted right at the back of the car, making it an RR, rear engine, rear wheel drive. This basic setup has remained in place for over half a century. Porsche Company was established by the genius engineer Ferdinand Porsche. Before the founding of Porsche, Ferdinand had worked on many racing cars and aircraft engines as a young man. The first Porsche went on sale in 1949. It was a sports car known as the Porsche 356. With its compact body and rear mounted engine, it was immediately entered into various races. In many ways, the Porsche 911 is an evolved version of the original 56, an evolution which continues to this day. Timeless design, it is definitely. They all look beautifully. Oh, they will be super. I won't be doing it now. I'm going to listen to Chris. Haha, <laughs> this really gets my blood pumping. A definitive Porsche, a sports car that makes absolutely no compromises. After 2008, the 997 GT3 produced double the downforce it previously did. In addition, the engine and brakes were made even more powerful. Not only that, but it utilizes an engine crank crankcase that has been owned for racing since the air-cooled days. No question about it, this one's a real gem. And let's listen to Tom Matana. The 997 restores some of what was lost in the trans transition from the 993 to the 996 and adds some subtle upgrades. Actually, a few of these upgrades have become Porsche standards. Note, for example, how the turn indicators are integrated into the bumper's air intake scoops. While subtle upgrades may not seem like much, they enhance the design and give a sense of uniform quality. Wow, thank you for sharing that with us. 
I look forward to discussing car design in more depth the next time we get the chance. And this concludes it for today, or actually it doesn't. I have a few things here in our garage. First of all, the car collection. We added three cars in German. I miss Germany? I think I miss German. Oh, it was the flag. Uh, so the Porsche 911 Turbo 930 uh, 81. 1981 and then the 993 Carrera RS from 95 and then the Carrera RS uh, 964 from 92 all of them are really really amazing but we also have free gifts we have a one three star roulette ticket and two four star roulette of despair tickets let's go with the three star first Oh, wow, this is the first time, first time I didn't get the worst possible reward. And this is the second time at the car, but the other one was five cars to choose from, so there was no choice. Feels so good, finally get something different. It really does. Uh, that's a nice car as well. Really happy with that. And it increases my collection, which is nice. So, two four star tickets. Oh, that, poor, that fort would be amazing, but yeah, I'm not counting on that. Oh my! How is that even possible? I'm so lucky today. A Ford GT, GTE car. Oh my gosh. Of course, it's group, group 3 here, which is a BS, but yeah, GTE car. Amazing. That feels so great. Finally, something better than the worst price ever. It was two in a row. Maybe the third one would be a charm. Uh, and it's a level up from 16 to 18. Where was the 17? Was that car worth so much that it uh, bumped me two levels straight away? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I don't care. And the uh, last ticket. What an amazing uh, roulette ticket this days. So what do you have? We have an Audi here. That would be that would be something. Now we are back to normal. Okay, cool. I'm still happy. Two out of three. That's really good. Then grant. Lovely. Actually, um, I'm really surprised it's not showing me that I have a new car in my garage. Two. Oh, now it shows. I need, it needed to reset or reset. So one of them is American, one of them is Japan. So let's go to Japan first. Uh, here it is. The 86 GRMN from 1916. Uh, sorry, 2016. The Ultimate Nürburgring Meister Toyota 86. Lovely. So I should test it on Nürburgring then. I'm assuming it's Nordschleife. And, oh no, no, no. And let's go to US all the way down. And let's have a look at the beautiful Ford GT race car from 2018. GTE car. What a beast. What an amazing car. Winner of Le Mans. Good. That that now concludes uh, today's uh, journey through the cafe of GT7. I would like to thank you all for watching and have a great day. And I'll see you next time.